All right, Gomo, welcome back. And thank you, Mark. It's been a while. It has. So there were so many questions left unanswered last time we did this that I'd love to know. I think a lot of people would like to know. I think let's just start with some questions and we'll go from there. Sure. What, uh, how, how vulnerable are we all to people like yourself, to a hacker? Uh, the average person is exceptionally vulnerable to any sorts of intrusions, whether they be digital or in real life. The trails that we leave behind are the narrative that spreads within, right? We leave, we leave everyone leaves trails on social media platforms with purchases, with any type of interaction in their daily life, such as when you drive in a car, there you may or may not realize it, but your license plate is being captured with A and R. And at that point, that data is fed into public systems uh, and you are able to be identified rather quickly with someone with mild potential and a little bit of Python programming language. So, how, how is your license plate being picked up? Um, mostly through municipalities where they are capturing your license plate as they go through state pass systems, um, Easy Pass, Sun Pass, et cetera. And so th those systems also share with the public scope your license plate. And of course, there's DOT cameras everywhere. So you really, all you really must, must remember is that someone with a little bit of ingenuity and some time on their hands can write together a program that's able to identify your specific license plate and then ping you or have a, or create an action on that. So it's, that's just one narrative. There's so many, um, as I mentioned, social media, um, that, that's, that's a terrible place to, it's a terrible place to share your life with because you, who are you sharing your life with? Uh, would you go out uh, of your front yard and um, say, hey, put all of your personal photos in your front yard for your neighbors to see? But yet most people are doing that on the, the internet, on the World Wide Web, on apps, et cetera. And so that causes a problem when you are trying to expect some sort of privacy uh, away from digital threats. What's been the most, like, like, if you want to do something really dark and disturbing with, with your skills, what, what, what kind of stuff have you gotten into? Um, I mean, they're, they're, you, could, you could do something in the name of good, like you know, trying to find sex offenders, for example, or something like that. You could also do things against corporations. You could do all kinds of stuff, right? You can, and I have, and I'm, I'm very well proud of the things that I've done in my past. I've done some things that even shocked me along the way. Um, using, you know, I, I always speak to people in, in, with a lot of passion and telling them to use their skills for something good because it's so easy to use your skills in such a nefarious way. In the past, for me, it was catching thieves, targeting retail outlets in the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars, to which those threat actors are in prison still to this day. It's my goal, and I've always used my skills after I was able to identify that I'm a good guy, right? And it's always been my intent to make sure that people don't have to wake up with their credit ruined or their lives digitally firebombed because they were just part of something innocent. And I feel good when I help situations that um, right those wrongs with my skills. What's behind it for you? what motivated you to even follow this path? Is, it, is there something in your personality? Is, is, it, is it fueled by anger? Is it fueled by, why are you a hacker basically? 
Um, you know, I just turned 50. And when I, when I was seven and eight years old, I used to take apart our television set with a butter knife. And I wanted to know where the pictures came from. And I wanted to know how it worked. I, I was curious as, you know, like, how does this thing get sound? And I, w I was fascinated with it. And so I could not put the television back together and my mom warmed my behind for it. But I never stopped with that. Um, next up was were the telephones. I'm eight years old and I'm fascinated with telephones. I'm fascinated with the fact that I, at eight years old, I'm, I'm able to identify mm, touch tone versus mm, uh, ring tone and mm, uh, DTMF versus pulse. And, and those systems were fascinating because you could, for instance, on the old analog systems, you could take a receiver and go click, 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 and you could get an operator, right? And well, that was cool. And so what else can you do with all of these clicks and sounds and pops and things? And so um, it was not long before I discovered phone freaking. And by nine years old, I'm freaking telephone systems. The drive is the curiosity. Mm, the it's the curious nature it's the wonder of being able to accomplish a task that's what drives me the knowing that i'm helping someone preventing someone's grandmother from being a victim of some sort of cyber extortion scheme that's the thing that i get up for each day and those are the things that motivate me currently today i know the dark things that people have intentions for when it comes to using information nefariously. And I do my best to interrupt that. And I'm going to continue to, and I'm not afraid of anybody. And if I'm called to take care of that, it's game over for that person or that group. So I'm is, driven by that. Does anyone protected or immune to what you can do? To what I can do. Mm, it's not polite to brag, but I feel like I'm not limited by any of my capabilities. Well, I mean, and this gets into, there's many different ways of doing the kind of things that hackers do, right? There's many different areas they get into. There are, there, there are so many areas of hacking and that's where my encouragement comes from. It was fascinating. Last time you talked about what you did with gas stations when you were young and broke. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would take when I was a kid, I was living in uh, Chevrolet Chevette, 1989. And I took a speaker magnet, you know, and I broke it off. And the old man at the FINA station would he sat in a chair and you would pull up and you would wave. Hey. And. And, you know, you had the lever and you, you would take the magnet and stick it to, you know, it's facing the boulevard and you just stick it here and you flip the lever and it's gas is gushing in your tank, but there's the numbers are not moving. And so and as he comes out, you know, to accept payment for your fuel, you pull the magnet off and you just hold it in your hand like everything's cool. And you get like $30 worth of gas for two or three dollars. And. And then today, what kind of things are you getting into? They went out of business, by no, the way. No, of course, yeah. yeah. But, that, but that, <laughs> the gas pumps have changed since then, too. Yes. But what, what kind of things do you get into nowadays? Uh, nowadays, I, uh, I consult, and I, um, I've joined uh, a, a, some ventures to where I continue to work every day, a nine-to-five, um, bringing my skills to fruition for the greater good. I still threat hunt. I still track down people who need to be tracked down. And I even get on Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. I do what you think I do. What, you, what people think I do, what I've, I've read the comments. I, I have not looked at that video that I shot with you a year ago, but 
before I came here, I read the comments and the comments were very moving. And that's why, you know, people telling me that, you know, I helped save them. I, I you know, they were at the bottom of, of a barrel or they were, they were at their wits end and, and they saw my words of encouragement. That's what I do. That's why I get up every morning. That's exactly what I do this for. Mm. I make sure that your mom and grandma and your wife and husband and kids sleep safe at night. Mm. Because someone doesn't want them to sleep safe at night. There's a lot of, a lot of evil in the world, isn't there? There sure is. And... You must know evil to face it, and I certainly am not afraid to face any type of evil, Mark. Has it gotten worse in, in the decades that you've seen? It before? has, unfortunately. When I was a child, it was happy, fun things like sending someone a virus and opening the CD drawer or having endless JavaScript pop-ups. That was fun but as with as with society shifting from an analog life to a digital life the the bad things unfortunately come along with the with them so instead of the old days of bonnie and clyde type of stick ups and banks it's occurring in so many channels because those channels have been opened up for anyone to become a criminal if that's their so desire. Um, the landscape has changed brutally as we see software now being, creating, be, being created for weaponry like Stuxnet and WannaCry and these types of systems that are introduced to create panic and havoc with society and your iPhone. They're continuing to develop and increase in frightening precision. You don't have to look any further than uh, TikTok and look at the algorithm on how frighteningly accurate is it it is or when you're speaking around a bunch of mobile devices ipads whatever then you start seeing ads for the things that you were speaking of that technology is being used to weaponize it's being weaponized to to be possibly used against people unknowingly in the future and so yes the landscape is growing darker and more sinister as more people wish to seek their wealth uh, whether it be cryptocurrency theft or traditional um, theft of um, banking systems the the fact that governments now are keen to begin a war on on just the idea of software being deployed is quite frightening and unfortunately that will be society's new reality in the future how does it make you feel having such an unusual and powerful skill set uh you know i because you can do anything, right? You, you're wealthy from your Bitcoin. No, I'm quite wealthy. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to work. You, you could be in Aruba right now for... I do not have to work if I don't choose to. I have over $7 billion worth of Bitcoin, yes. Yeah. But, but you choose to work... A nine to five. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Just because you're doing what you love to do and you believe in it. I, I just explained to your viewers that that's exactly what motivates me. Yeah. So how does it make you feel to have this unusual series of uh, skills? Mm, it makes me feel useful to be part of something bigger when I'm asked to be part of it. Mm. I, 
I've always wanted to live a normal life. I've always wanted to, I've, I like wonder how the normal person lives that, you know, you get up and you get on the train, right. And you go to work in an office in downtown Chicago, which I've done, which, you know, I, I wanted to, I wanted to feel that. I want to feel that. And I can't even, even though I've done these things, I, even though I rode a train and I hated it, I hate Metro in Chicago. The, Hmm. It frightens me. I am reserved. I think about things very cautiously before I speak. And I certainly think four to five times before I react. Yes, I, I can breach any system or network, whether in real life or digitally. And Again, it's not me to be here to brag you ask the question. So I've proven myself. I went from a kid in Jacksonville, Florida, being scrappy, picking up Coke bottles on Fifth Street on the west side to making sure that I never have to pick up any more goddamn Coke bottles. And I promised my mom I wouldn't do that either. So hmm, these are the things that keep me in check, making sure that I don't fuck up. Is, is poverty the motivator behind a lot of what you're doing then? No, it's not. Poverty was, poverty wasn't anything new to me. You know, I, when my daughter was born, I was 18 years old. I stood in a food stamp line for two years every day, you know, because even though I had mentioned my wife's parents at the time took me in, they never helped my wife or I for anything, anything. And they haven't spoken to my wife in 10 years. They never did anything for me. And so poverty was common. Even her parents set me up to fail and her, my wife, they set us both up to fail. Every time that I would accomplish something small, they would get in the middle of it. And so I choose just to do the right thing. You know, my wife at the time told me to be honest and tell the truth and, 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 and do the right thing. And, and my best friend who passed away during the year that I've been on the soft white underbelly passed away as well. And he was my mentor and he would always tell me he's from the South side of Chicago and Die hard Sox fan and mm, a, a Irish mobster kind of guy, but he would always tell me, you know, he would call me up and say, "Hey, what are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm doing this." He's like, "No, no, 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 no. You're you're being a fucking jack off, man. You're doing it all wrong." And and I would feel horrible because I'm like, "Who is this guy talking to me like this?" But I accepted the criticism and. Mm, and I miss him a lot, but uh, yeah, it's, there's just doing the right thing. You've got to do the right thing. We all are born with good hearts. I mean, everybody is born with a great heart. And the people that I see on this channel, you know, there's so many people that, you know, they're, they're lost, they, they, or they were, or they're finding their way, or from a drug addiction to rehab to relapses and et cetera. And one thing that none of the people on this soft white underbelly realize is that your heart is still good, no matter how much you damage it. And we're all born with good hearts, and we should take advantage of that. And so that's what, what drives me. Right. But has technology made life better for us or, or 
is it undermining our ability to find happiness? That's a great question. Uh, it, it's sort of both, right? As as clearly now we're able to film Hollywood cinematography type interviews in any location, but and and, and call anyone. The communications, mm, they're, they're so advanced and so unbelievable, even from 30 years ago, 20 years ago. Mm, I, I still marvel being able to walk around with my flip phone and make a call to someone in Tokyo. Mm. The, the, the darks, the, the dark side of technology has always been there and it's making things worse because you have websites like mm, Twitter and Facebook and MySpace and all of these ridiculous things that people share all of their information with that's reshaping the foundation of who we are as a species, such as take, for instance, now you have people that simply type in shorthand because they've never written a letter with a pen. There are so many disastrous consequences to come. You have the ideas and expectations of the metaverse, which I hate saying. And the Web 3 or Web 4, the, in, the engaging future of social engagement in an avatar-based fantasy r reality that already is present with cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens being the basis of these technologies. And I feel that these social technologies as they become more ingrained will dissolve our desire to wishing to touch one another as it already does now. Just look at people who date on apps. Uh, they have no emotion or feeling basically because they've become numb to seeing so many people that they have a choice to date or see. What happened to people touching each other and having an honest conversation? That's, that should be found again, but technology is going to prevent it every step because someone has a click or pay-per-view or a, an ad dollar or something that's driving it or an, or an influence or... or so the landscape changes as the more our lives become dependent on technology in a pretty sinister way, unfortunately. So it's safe to say that social media, even though it's, it's supposed to bring us all together, it seems to be tearing us apart at the same time. Absolutely. Ask any lawyer any, in any city anywhere in the world. Any teenager. Yeah. Ask any... Ask any lawyer what the number one reason that they are handling a divorce and, and they will tell you Facebook. The number one reason. The number one reason. Let that be an indication of the things to come. People say, oh, well, I'll use Twitter or I'll just anonymously use TikTok or these other silly services. They're entertaining and should not be used for more than 10 minutes a day, but people spend hours and hours on these things. Yeah. When is the last time that you can find someone under 30 years old that spent most of their time outside speaking to other people rather than looking at a, a glass slab? What's your prognosis for mankind then with, with all this technology that's exponentially growing and progressing. I, I believe there's a great prognosis for mankind. I, I don't paint a bleak picture or outlook at all. I think that we are going to do just fine in the future. 
Once we get through some of these silly road bumps that we experience now and in the future, technology will actually be so transparent within our lives it, that it will be it will be hard to imagine a life without it. And so we still touch things like cameras and phones and computer keyboards and when the technology becomes invisible, that's when things will become much, much better. Smartphone, smart, the puck device speaker things, those are, these are all poor attempts at that reality. Things will be great with anything. We have our perils. Look at internal combustion engines, for example. We, fully recognize that it's they're bad for our planet but we're just now taking action on those mm, issues and so mm, it's good to see that shift because mm, that was one of the first indicators of how bad technology treats us was the invention of technology that's polluted the planet so far so given that you're, as a hacker, you're looking for vulnerabilities constantly, right? Right. That's what you do. Yes. Does that bleed into your personal life when you're interacting with somebody? You're, you're, you're seeing their vulnerabilities? It does. It, it certainly does. And it's, it's an unfortunate consequence of just me being who I am. I try not to, but... I readily notice things in someone's presence, whether it's the 114 slats in the door behind you or the 16 different vents in this room. I, I count the, I look for the risk associated with any situation that I encounter and um, and determine the threat and possibility of either reduction or improvement within a few seconds. <sighs> one of the one of the things that I I've you know I I I've always had a condition to where it's where where I see numbers where when people are programming in Python or whatever you see numbers and letters and and you see syntax error etc but I don't see any of that I I don't see numbers syntax or brackets I simply see colors and those those colors are associated with everything that I encounter, including people in real life and online. And so, um, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it is, yes, I cannot escape the fact that I, I'm a hacker and it, that's who I am. I, I don't clock in at 9 a.m. and turn it off at five. And so it's, definitely in my personal life it's it's entered into my personal life um in, in good and bad ways and i uh look to avoid it as much as possible in my personal life even though you see how the, the evil exists in the world and, and, and is progressing you still you're you remain an optimist i do you're yeah. in the front lines of all the evil that's being done or a lot of it, right? You know, especially in technology and things like that. I am, and I, I believe, you know, I, you know, it's just like any belief. There, you know, no one likes the police, right? Uh, what's wrong with people? If you, who are you going to call when you're getting jumped on? <laughs> the police, they're like, the police were beat up because they there's bad police in cities that do bad things well with any profession there's going to be bad apples and it's so cliche to say but it's true the 
the the fact that uh, people aren't using their common sense really is a strong indicator of what we know, what we've learned, and where we're heading. And so that's pretty much the summary of my feeling on that. So you, you have very little education. You didn't go to college, you didn't go to, you didn't graduate high school, did you? I did not, no, I, um, um, you're a self, you're a self learner. I have, I've taught myself everything. I, I dropped out in the seventh grade and, um, I taught myself everything. Um, by the time that I dropped out of school, it was really boring for me. Mm, the teachers were very frustrated with my approach to their curriculum. And uh, rightly so, I would have been frustrated with someone who had m more knowledge than them. And most teachers then and even now don't care. They just wish to obtain a paycheck. With that, no, I've never went to college, high school. I don't know what it feels like to date the prom queen or or any of that, you know, when, when other kids were, you know, watching the Cosby show and, you know, laying in their warm beds, you know, I, I was, you know, I was trying to figure out how to hack into something to provide me with some comfort. Like, you know, is it an ATM? Is it a building? Or am I swapping UPCs at the market? But those were survival, those things that I, you know, I'm not happy that I did all of that stuff, but you have to do what you have to do to survive. And fortunately, I never had to harm anyone, which was never a rule anyhow. So now over the past year, I've taught at uh, Jacksonville University. I taught intrusion detection systems uh, for a cybersecurity course over there. Mm, kind of ironic, right? I mm -hmm. now have been asked to teach at university and, and never having left the eighth grade, but I now mm, speak to professors and, and thought leaders and, and CEOs of companies, and like I've mentioned before, very important and powerful people. And it's interesting when I have meetings with most of these people that mm, my, my perception of their intelligence sometimes sits on a balance like a, like a teeter-totter. Mm. I've spoken at several universities over the past year as well, and the year prior, and I've been working with the kids to, the co college kids, and helping them foresee a future in, in cybersecurity and information technology, and the, 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 young, the young minds and it's been great. It's been a great, fascinating, it's fascinating to walk through a college campus and wonder what it would have been like to have been there 30 years earlier. Mm, but it's so, it's, it's interesting. But uh, yeah, I've taught myself everything that I've needed to learn in life. And, and, uh, I, I, you know, as a hacker, you, you never stop learning. I will never stop learning until I pass away. Someone who says that they're going to retire or they're, they're just there to do a nine to five job, they are not, that's not what they should be doing. They should be doing something else. But if you are driven by 
a core belief like I am, and for me there are many, then you'll find great joy and passion within anything that you do, whether it's information technology, cybersecurity, or being a brick mason. No one, sh no one judges you, no one wants to judge you, but everyone wants to be the main character in the show. Everybody, everywhere you look in society, on all of the internet you see, will fight for you or fighting for you or breaking news this or who are, who, who are we fighting? I mean, who, who, what, you know, lawyer and lawyer ads on billboards and will fight for you. What, what does that mean? Like, does, what happened to, we will litigate properly. We will litigate your case. What is, why is fighting all of this, this anger? I mean, it, it, I'm beside myself when I am in public and look at like a television screen and they have a news feed and. I see people yelling and screaming at each other and, you know, back to you, Bob, and, you know, they yell and scream at, for eight minutes and then they go to a commercial and then it's back to yelling and screaming again with no real constructive output or resolution. And, and now we are at the throes of a madman with nuclear weapons in Europe and if that's not the most scary thing about someone having technology at their disposal, I don't know what is. So you want to know who has the best big button with a chip in it? It would be that guy. And my heart is with everyone in Europe. Is capitalism or greed the biggest problem that we, we have? I mean, there's such a wealth gap in our country and it just seems like the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer and it just seems like it's just gonna continue that way. No, I, I don't see it that way. I see the motivations coming from misinformation from what we consume. Everybody's got their face glued to something. You have your favorite website. They have their favorite website. They have their favorite website. You obtain your information from all of these different streams. And once that information becomes distorted, then you become distorted. I had, I had a man come up to me in a restaurant and started screaming at me about, you know, political things and it was frightening and so people again I must have conversations go to your local bar or dive or park and, and meet your neighbor I, I bet I bet anyone that they don't even know four or five of their neighbors that live around them and most people don't even know their next door neighbor that's what's wrong. It's not, we should fear this or this government's not doing this for us, so we should ask for more and encourage even more change to people who will never enact it. We, uh, we, are, we are all unique with our own heart. It's easy to have a conversation. Try it. It's not hard to do. And Gamma, what would you say is the most important thing all of this has taught you? Mm. It's, t it's taught me to share these experiences that I speak of now for the second time, and most likely the last. Mm. I... I I, I've, I have read the words that people have written to me in response to the first video that I recorded with you. And, and it's overwhelming and heartwarming to know that I've been validated. 
And so everybody that believed in me, yeah, it, everybody on your channel has shown me that love. And, uh, you know, that's all, that's all I'm about, man, is, you know, just uh, making sure that we use our hearts for something we use our hearts for something good we don't we don't we're only here for such a short time and pe people argue and fight and, and panic and just find find your heart like i found mine and once you do right you will realize the things that you've done aggressively all your life have been wrong. My only regret is I wish I had more time to, and I wish I had found my heart sooner to share the things that I know now. And so I'll keep doing that. Uh, and I want people to do that as well. Excellent. Gummo, thank you so much for coming back and sharing more of your wisdom with us. Thank you, Mark. It's my last time for sure. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.